Gene Bodsler here, uh, Sugarland, Texas. I want to point out some ash trees here that were growing native uh, when the home was built about uh, six to nine years ago. Now, this particular homeowner uh, has a strategic sense of foresight. He planted four Bradford pears, five pears, and a red oak in preparation for replacing the canopy loss as these ash trees uh, met their demise. The only problem is that the ash trees didn't cooperate. <clears throat> They're all still standing. Now, I, I constantly point out this lion's tail pruning. I don't want to say technique. But you look over in here in this uh, common area where the pruning hasn't been done and there remains a large amount of interior and lower canopy foliage on these trees. And so if I'm going to prune that branch right there, for example, to help light penetration or to help these these. Bradford pears get a little bit more light, then I, because of previous pruning, I've got nothing to cut back to. Unfortunately, these pears have, have kind of grown into half trees, all of them leaning off to the right here. And I'd like to cut some one to three inch diameter branches, possibly even adventuring as big as four inch on these ash trees, but there's nothing to cut back to. So that poses a considerable challenge here. And as well with this tree here that's over towards the house. Now, one of uh, many examples of how your pruning practices can impact the way you're overall property gets managed. These ash trees here that have not been gutted actually give us some more possibilities. And if we take a four or five inch diameter branch off to try to give this poor leaning red oak, arguably the highest quality specimen we've looked at so far, got some nice uh, apical dominance here, some growing room, then we're, we're not removing large percentages of the foliage with one cut. Whereas if we make a similar sized cut on say the end of that leader, it re represents a, a double digit percentage of the leaf population. So while these trees ain't pretty and they have a lot of dead and broken branches and even some nasty stubs, they give us a heck of a lot more options when it comes to, to pruning. I think it's useful to point this out. And uh, in closing, I want to point out some of the structural defects. Not just the sap sucker damage, but these, these tight crotches that, that invite disease and decay and also have a higher risk of storm damage. There's usually a lot of these. This is an indication that the grade was changed. If you look closely you'll see that and my guess is that this occurred around the time of construction. This is the cut. This leader was growing towards the house and so half of the cut is buried, which is proof that the grade has been changed, or near proof. And that is where it starts to slope up towards the foundation of the house, by the way. Whereas all of these other ones, the grade has been less disturbed, if at all. So the first part of this short little uh, video has been to discuss the limited options after a tree's been heavily pruned. And the second part 
is to point out some of the structural defects, some of which can be corrected with pruning, others with cabling, and all of which could would best have been addressed when the trees were a lot younger. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, thank you for tuning in.